All right, guys, welcome back to part two of our build of the surplus strength clone of the UPS. Now, this is going to be painting, assembly, making cables, and also a loading pin. Now, the first step is going to be cleaning this guy. And what I use in this is called TSP. It is a cleaning product that's used for metal to make sure that it is nice and smooth. It removes dirt, grime, all that stuff that you might have encountered when you were doing your welding or your polishing or removing the paint. And then uh, it pretty much gets it ready uh, to be primed. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix this uh, one part cleaner to four parts water in a spray bottle, and then you're gonna douse the whole thing. And you're gonna leave it there for a few minutes, just so it gets a chance to penetrate into the project and then we're gonna wipe it off. I went ahead and did this twice just to make sure it was all good. And as you can see, I hung it from the rack through one of the pins so it was easy to move around and paint and, uh, and work with. After I'd finished cleaning it, I went ahead and set up the room Dexter style. And uh, I tricked my wife, I called her out there, I texted her, I said, hey, come on out real quick. I was wearing nothing but an apron and I had a knife. Uh, she didn't think it was too funny, uh, but uh, that's another story. And after we have all of our stuff set up and because we don't want to get paint anywhere else, we have our sort of our little booth set up here, even though I did get red paint all over the uh, mats, I'm going to have to remove that with acetone, but hey, that's fine. I'll do that later. It's time to prime. So what I did was I got a primer and I made sure that it would work in a paint gun. I'd actually never used a paint gun before, uh, but I got this one from my neighbor across the street and I wanted to test it out. So I did. And I'll tell you what, it is way better than using aerosol paint cans. Number one, there's not a lot of smell. Number two, um, it goes on a lot smoother. I didn't have really any drips just because it comes out so fine. Once you get this thing dialed in, uh, it is definitely an improvement. If you're going to want to do a lot of projects like this, I would definitely highly recommend a paint gun, not the one that is shown here, but basically a gravity filled one, which has the can on top rather than down here, but I work with what I got. And after I had everything all primed and waited for a little bit for it to dry, I went ahead and did my coats of the red. I took a piece of my Rogue Upright into Home Depot. I had them color match it and give me a semi-gloss finish, which is what I want. I probably should have gone high gloss just because when you're doing a, a a paint like this, which is not acrylic, it's a latex based water paint, you can't do a clear coat over the top or so I was told. So I didn't want to ruin the project. I didn't want it bubbling up afterwards. So uh, I said I was done. But if I was going to do it again, I'd probably get a high gloss. So just so it had like a real fine shine to it. And I went ahead and did two coats, two coats, Biff, two coats. Um, and then it was looking really nice and uh, I didn't really have to sand it down at all just for the fact that I used this paint gun, there were no drips and uh, let it dry and uh, we're good to go. All right guys, I'm back in the flesh and I'm pretty happy on how this thing turned out. I think it looks really nice and professional and <clears throat> now I'll just go ahead and show you guys how to assemble it. Now I decided to go with the upgraded aluminum rollers just because they look slick. They look like uh, the rims I had on my Honda Civic when I was a kid. But anyways, the spacers, we got washers, we got a locking washer, we got nuts. All this stuff I will reference in the instructions on the website. So for all the specifics, the size of the holes you need, all that kind of stuff I will put on there. So I'm not going to get into that now. Um, but I also made these guys and this is just some copper that I had laying around. That's going to go in here and going to, it's going to spin freely. Over time, there may be a lot of wear on the cable if you just have a bolt through here. Who knows? But the other one had a roller like this, so I decided to make one too. Uh, and then I painted them red, and that is basically the gist. Now I'll show you guys how to put these guys in and uh, what to do if they're a little loose. And obviously this is for demonstration purposes. I've taken a spotter arm, taken the UHM plastic off the tops just so I could put it down here so it's easier to assemble. Uh, bolt washer outside. Two washers on the inside, unless 
you test this out and the roller is really wobbly, you may want to throw a third either on the left or the right. So I found an easy way is to get this set up like this, keep it in there, and then take another bolt and temporarily use it on the other side. That way you can place the roller in there, pop this one through, it'll push this one out, and then you'll be in there. Very hard to finagle your way up in here with washers and the spacer while the wheel is in there. So get in there, now you got your gap in the middle. Take your roller. Come through like that, get this all lined up. And if it lines up, it should just push through and you're in. So this one's a little wobbly. So this is the one I'm gonna actually use a washer on this right hand side to uh, fix that. So I'm gonna go back through with this guy. All right, now that I got three on the right side, I can sort of put this guy down here. Now it's gonna fit real snug, so might have some, a little bit of a struggle getting it in there, but there we go. Bam. No wobble. Final washer on the outside here. Locking washer and nut. All you're gonna do is flip it around or go to the other side and do the other one. So I'm not gonna showcase that in the video, but then I will uh, go ahead and show you guys how to set it up and decide how long your cable needs to be. And then we'll actually make some cables in this video with a uh, hydraulic cable crimper. All right guys, so after we decide where we're gonna mount it, and remember, all racks are different heights. Your height might be different. I recommend that you take a piece of rope or anything that you have, string even, and actually put it through the rollers and then let it hang down to one side all the way to your loading pin that you're going to use. Now I didn't have a loading pin here. I have one where I'm going to put this thing. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to make a loading pin. If you don't have one already, it's super easy and it took me like 10 minutes. So um, basically you want to go down from your loading pin on one side, measure all the way up over to where you're going to put it. Now I'm going to put it pretty high because I can always make another cable to go down lower if I want to. And so what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna put this guy over the top. I went and got 15 feet from Home Depot today and I already uh, made one side, but um, it's way too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make the cable out of a hydraulic crimp and um, so it looks pretty professional. This is one fourth inch cable, which actually, you could go a little bit heavier, but that's actually what Surplus Strength will sell you if you're gonna get a cable from their website and I wanted to do this basically all the spec of what they have going on over there just so there's nothing chintzy about it. So uh, let's make some cable. All right, so we have our cable strung over and down and attached to our loading pin so we know where it's gonna be. Now you don't want the cable too short because you want the loading pin to be able to touch the floor, which is obvious, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. Uh, we, we don't mind if the cable is short, uh, because we can always attach a chain or something else or another cable over here to make it longer. Uh, so what I would do is I'm going to want it about here. So what I'm going to do, because I'm going to make a loop, is I'm going to go down a little bit more and then I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie right here. So I know where to cut it off because then I'm going to be looping it up and that's where we're going to crimp it and then I'll show you how to crimp it. Now, since I don't have any wire cutters or anything like that that's going to cut through this easily it's going to fray the wire i find the best way is just to use a dremel and give it a nice clean cut so that's what i'm going to do here
Easy as that. If you have wire cutters though, that'll go through this and maybe you do because some of them come with the hydraulic sets, uh, then I would use that, but this works well. Next, we're gonna take off some of this plastic and I'll show you a way I find that works pretty well for that. First, we're gonna find out what our loop is gonna look like. So, I think, I think a loop like that is going to look pretty good. Our crimp's going to go on here. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be perfect. So I'm going to start by stripping the wire or really getting the plastic sheathing over the wire. And I'm doing this very gently and just going around. Just making sure that I don't cut into the cable at all. And once you do that, and you can sort of bend this guy and see if there's any area that didn't get cut. That you need to readdress. All right, that looks pretty good. The next thing I would do is take an X-Acto knife, but don't put the blade out all the way. Just put it just enough to run a slice down this, so that way we can take it off and sort of peel this off. Again, this may take some time just because it's not going to cut, but eventually. All right, guys, so this is a hydraulic crimp. And yes, I did just drop a piece. Uh, anyways, it has a bunch of different dies that you can put in here. Now, the one I'm using right now is the 35, which I researched was perfect for a 1 4th inch cable. Now, this is the piece that we're going to be putting the cable through, and we are going to put it in here and we're gonna smush it down once and then twice to basically enclose the cable inside of this so it does not come apart. Now, there's a ton of different tools that you can get to do this. I just happen to have this one here. So be sure to do your research. I'll have a bunch of different links in the description of this video and you can decide what is best for you. This is definitely not the cheapest option, but there are other cheaper options. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take this bare cable and we're going to put it through one of the sides here. Once we go up this side, I'm going to take it down. We're going to loop it. We're going to come back through. Okay. We're going to leave a little bit of room over here just in case, just so it doesn't pull out there. Now, then we're going to put this guy in here and we're going to do our first crimp once you got it situated in here just keep continuing to press until your pecs are burning ah! Good God. And one more for good measure. Next, I'm gonna switch it off. 
releases it, as you can see, crimped it pretty good there. We'll move it one spot down and we will repeat the process and do it one more time just to make sure. Turn it back to on. Talk about a workout. All right. The end, you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. That cable is going nowhere and uh, we can use it on our setup. All right, so as you can see here, I took one of these A-frames, I cut it up and uh, I had holes in it because I had it attached to the wall so I could put plates on it. But I don't need that anymore because I have storage on here. I have a, you know, plate storage over here. So I said, I don't need this anymore. Why don't I just uh, make this into a loading pin? So what I did was I took a screw here, I put it through here, I welded it, I cut off the ends, and then I put a hook on here and a hook on here. So that is gonna be our loading pin for this project. I have a different one over at the other place where I'm gonna put this, but for demonstration purposes, I thought I'd make this one for you guys. As you can see, I have the loop here, and uh, now we just made that other loop. I'm gonna throw it over the top and uh, we'll, see how this thing works. The other thing I should mention is that I took this ball, which you can order a la carte, a la carte. You can order those things on Amazon uh, and they'll come, they come in kits sometimes, but I had these, I had two of them from the old Titan Fitness pull down system that I had. So I attached one here and I attached one on the front. Obviously you're gonna need to do that before you do the second crimp. So they're both on here because obviously you can't put them on there after you have crimped the second one. Okay, so now that we have our cable strung over the top onto both rollers, it's time to secure it in place just so it doesn't pop off of there. And also if you pull it too hard, it doesn't go over the top. So this is what I have here. We're gonna hook those up and uh, secure it into place. As I mentioned before, I used some copper fittings that I had laying around. I don't want to have to go buy anything, and so I figured these would work perfect because you want it to be able to spin freely so it doesn't rub against the plastic coating on the outside of this cable here. So as you can see, it moves freely, and I'll just put the nut over here. So now when you pull, if you were to pull too far, boom, it's not gonna go over the top. The ball is gonna hit and it will go back down. Now, it probably hit there anyways, but just in case, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and we'll be good to go to test this thing out. And you hear that? No, you don't. It is super smooth. These rollers are amazing. The thing feels a lot better than those janky cable systems that you see all over Instagram now, the Pulley Pros and all. Everybody's got one, right? I originally had the Spud Ink ones and uh, those, those they work fine. But you know what? There's some grinding on the cable. It's, it's not wrapped in a rubber coating. Uh, and this is a great design. It gets you away from the weight because there's nothing worse than pulling down the weight and having it swing into your knees or hit you in the shins. So shout out to Surf Plus Strengths. Well, 
Thank you guys very much for watching part two. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. And also if you're returning, thanks for sticking with me. Now this project, as I said in the other one, is a lot of work. This is a lot of hours, it's countless hours. So I think that if you want a product like this, the best route is just to go to Surplus Strength and uh, buy it from them. And also with that being said, if Surplus Strength is watching this video, um, as you can see here, before I painted it, and I almost didn't paint it, I almost went and got a clear coat because it looked so cool when it was all polished up um, before I primered it, before I painted it. So uh, you may want to consider making a version like that with a clear coat because it would look awesome on those new rep clear coat racks that are coming out. So until next time, guys, this is Aaron, Curls in the Rack. And on the next video, I will be making my own version of this, not an exact copycat uh, that I think you guys are going to like. It's going to be able to go on either an upright or a cross member. Um, so uh, stay tuned. Peace.